there, I'm Dre, the host and founder of The Dragon Network. Welcome to this week's video. Today we're actually going to continue the topic that I started last week on the WHO program for international drug monitoring and we're going to talk about a standardized terminology set that is known as MEDRA. If you didn't get a chance to watch last week's video, I am going to link it below, but to quickly catch you up, we talked about the WHO program that was put in place in 1968 the Uppsala Monitoring Center, which actually looks after the administration of that program, and the WHO Drug Code Dictionary that's utilized to identify all of the drugs that are being tracked and monitored and reported on by 150 plus participating countries as people look to report on the effects, adverse events, and really the use of those drugs and how they may introduce harm or cause harm or have unintended side effects for patients. So last week we introduced that drug dictionary set. This week I'm going to introduce MEDRA, which is the standardized terminology for reporting those adverse events or those side effects or those impacts of those drugs. So let's not waste any time. Let's just jump right in. So MEDRA was developed in the 1990s by an organization that is referred to as ICH. If you're not familiar what ICH stands for, it's probably because its name is really long. It's the International Council for Harmonization of Technical Requirements for Pharmaceuticals for Human Use. So obviously you can see that that one was definitely one that everyone wanted to attach an acronym for. So ICH it is. MEDRA is a terminology set that is used to code drug events in humans. So whether that be adverse reactions or histories, things like that. It is used primarily by regulatory and pharmaceutical industries, but of course, in order to actually administer drugs to understand what the side effects are. It is also used by care providers, by health organizations, by clinical researchers, and by a broad group of people that are actually responsible for administering and tracking and learning about the impacts of what they're studying. So as part of the WHO program for the international drug monitoring, it is again looking to identify patterns that uh, any side effects or events may have the potential to cause harm so that it can understand what those are sooner than if each country was looking at those on their own. There are currently using MEDRA more than 125 different countries, so not quite as many as using the WHO Drug Global Dictionary, but pretty close. The first version of it, so I mentioned that it was developed in the 90s, the first version was actually released in 1999 and it came out in English and Japanese but it has since been translated into more than a dozen different languages for use by those 125 countries. A subscription is free for regulators, pharmaceutical companies, and healthcare providers worldwide. There are other groups that can have access to that subscription for a nominal fee, and that is actually done on a sliding scale, but overall, most of the organizations that are participating in the administration of these clinical trials don't have to pay for their subscriptions, which is great. So the products that are covered within the scope of MEDRA are pharmaceuticals, biologics, vaccines, and drug device combination products. So it doesn't cover the same breadth that the WHO Drug Global Dictionary covers, but it does have a pretty broad range and it is of course incredibly important for clinical trials that we're actually studying on humans. It is used primarily in the clinical trial space from phase zero all the way through phase four of clinical trials. It is really a standard terminology that's set up in logical layers to support the individual who is administering the medication or the patient who's taking the medication reporting an event or a reaction or a side effect in their own terms. So it is absolutely useful for researchers, but it is meant in that layering component to actually capture what would be reported by an average patient. So the hierarchy itself, there's five different levels to the hierarchy. So let's take a look at what those levels are. So the first one is the lowest level terms. At this level, there's more than 80,000 terms, which are, like I said, to parallel or to align with the way that a clinician or an individual patient or a subject would actually report um, feeling or the impact or the effect of taking the medication that is being trialed. So I've got a GI example up on the screen so you can sort of walk your way through that. The second level is the preferred terms. So this is a distinct descriptor and it is a medical concept that is going to align with the symptom, the sign, or the disease process, the indication, investigation, whatever it is that you're looking at, but in a medical term. So it's actually gonna take that commonly reported term and it's going to layer up and go into a medical term. 
Each LLT or lowest level term that uh, is reported is linked to only one preferred term. So they only can go up to one. You can't have the same symptom reported at the base level that can go to multiples. And each PT has at least one LLT itself, but could have multiple LLTs. So a preferred term could have multiple lower level terms. You could report things a couple different ways. However, uh, it, it's only one link going up. So anything that's related of those preferred terms, they're grouped together into higher level terms. So those higher level terms are grouped together based on your anatomy, physiology, pathology, or function. So they're going to categorize things, if you will. So those high level terms are going to be grouped together based on their pathology, anatomy, functionality, and they're gonna be linked into a group that is high level group terms. And those, again, are going to be grouped up again or rolled up again into system organ classes. So those are looking at things like infections, infestations, a manifestation site, uh, a purpose. So surgical medical procedures, GI disorders would be an example of that that I've got up on the screen here. So you'll see that it's layering all the way up from what would be reported into a class of actual reactions that is occurring at the very top in that system organ classes group. So by having this layering system and having that mapping and grouping that is occurring within Medra, what this really does is there is a database which is called Vigibase that all of the clinical trial information is actually put into. And this database is containing, again, clinical trial information and drug reaction information and some history information from all of the participating countries, so the 125 participating countries using that same terminology set. And then queries can be run against that data set. So there are standardized queries. UMC, again, the Uppsala Monitoring Center, looks after keeping track of those things. But there are more than 100 different queries that actually can be run on that Vigibase data to try to come up with patterns and to get you information and to actually uh, give us what we need with creating those patterns. So the standardized metro queries, or SMQs as they're known, there's more than 100 of them that exist right now, and they cover all sorts of things from anaphylactic reactions to lack of efficacy or effect to cardiovascular issues. So it's actually gonna keep track of what's being reported, how it's being reported against, again, that WHO drug global dictionary and it's gonna link it all together and give us that information, which is phenomenal. Medra itself and the use of this standard terminology when reporting the effects or impacts or outcomes from clinical trial drugs, it is heavily used by pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical companies when they're doing their quality reporting. And of course, in clinical trials, sort of again, throughout all of the players that are in that particular trial stage. So in those clinical trial information systems that are out there, they have linkages to this. The terminology set is updated regularly. And as of recently, it's actually being used in some other industries as well. So there are industries such as the cosmetics industry that are using it to report effects of certain cosmetic formulations and things that they're using, as well as the tobacco industry. So if you look at uh, reporting the effects of vaping, for example, is being tracked using the Medra standard set. And we've got a few of the ICH regulatory bodies that have actually mandated the use of Medra in the reporting associated with clinical drug trials. So those include the European Commission, the US Food and Drug Administration, Health Canada, Switzerland's Swiss Medic, and a few others. So we are starting to see more and more of this. And why I'm trying to learn more about this whole topic is I think as we start to incorporate clinical trial information into our core EHRs, instead of having them off in a separate system. So as we actually look to really incorporate that a little bit more, and we start to look at trials that are occurring sort of outside of the acute care setting, more in the home, for example, or in primary care, trying to understand where the difference is going to be, if there should be a difference, or if the standardized terminology sets that are utilized, so the WHO Global Drug Dictionary and Medra, whether they're gonna to need to be mapped to our formularies. So right now, I don't believe they're mapped to everybody's formularies. They're only attached and utilized in those clinical trial spaces for those clinical trial uh, patients, and that functionality is sort of container. We do, of course, record adverse events. We do record reactions, and I'm not sure sort of where that tie is going to be. So I'm learning a little bit more about it so that I can understand uh, in case we go to that direction, which I kind of think we're going to, 
how that's going to work, what it's going to look like, what's really going to be involved, and really how much effort it's going to take. So I hope that this was helpful. I do understand that this was just a high level look at what the WHO Drug Global Dictionary last week and Medra this week is. That is because I am just learning about it. And as I learn more and as I discover more, I will certainly let you know. But I wanted to share what I've learned so far because I find it very interesting and I thought someone else might as well. So if you haven't had time to dive into it, I hope this was a good summary. I'm gonna put a bunch of links below to various uh, places that I got information from so that you can do some more reading if you like and look a little bit more into it, including taking a look at their implementation guides and some of their vendor assistance documentation that they've got out there. So I hope it was helpful. I will see you again next week for, I think, another topic.